It's January 2026, and whether you've just unwrapped a brand new iPhone or you've been using one for years, I still see iPhone owners making the same mistakes every single day. These are small habits, but they add up, and they're quietly making your iPhone harder to use than it needs to be. So in this video, I'm going to show you 10 things that iPhone owners should stop doing in 2026 if you want a better iPhone experience. Okay, let's get into it. Stop manually inputting contact details. Let's say that you're messaging someone because a friend has asked you to share the contact details for a person that you know. Most people either go into the contacts app and share a full contact card, which usually includes way more information than you need, or they copy a phone number or even write it down and then paste or manually type it into the message. There is a much easier way to do this built directly into your iPhone. The next time that you're writing a message and you want to include a phone number, long press in the message field until the menu appears. Tap the right pointing arrow, then choose autofill. From there, select contact and choose the contact that you want. You'll be taken to that contact card and you can simply tap the phone number that you want to share. It's then inserted straight into your message. I've used a phone number as the example here, but this works for anything on a contact card, including email addresses, postal addresses, or any other stored details. If you go back and look at the autofill options, you'll see that it can do a lot more as well. You can use it for passwords, credit card information, or even to scan text using live text. That lets you point your camera at something like a document or a book and insert the text directly into your message. Oh, very quickly, if you watch videos like this and think, well, that's great, but I'll definitely forget it later, I've made something to fix that. I send one short free iPhone tip every day direct to your inbox. It's called the Daily Swipe. It takes 30 seconds to read and it genuinely helps you remember and actually use tips like the ones in this video. Just scan the QR code on screen or tap the link in the description to join for free. Stop charging your iPhone to 100% if you don't need to. The great thing about modern iPhones is that they handle all of the battery intelligence for you, so there's very little that you need to worry about. You can usually just plug in and charge when you need to. That said, if you know you're someone who rarely needs the full 100% capacity of your battery, there are a couple of steps that you can take to help prolong its overall lifespan, and one of those is stopping it from charging all the way to 100%. I've covered this in more detail in battery-specific videos, so I won't go too deep here. But essentially, lithium-ion batteries, which are what modern iPhones use, don't like being at 0% or 100% for long periods of time. They prefer operating somewhere between around 20% and 80%. You can force your iPhone to only charge up to a certain level if you want. To see whether your iPhone supports this, go into Settings, then choose Battery, scroll down, and choose Charging. If your iPhone supports this feature, you'll see a section called charge limit. This lets you manually restrict how much your iPhone charges each time that you plug it in, anywhere from 80% up to 100% in 5% increments. You might also find, especially if you've been using your iPhone for a while, that it gives you a recommended charge limit. This is based on its analysis of your usage habits. So on my iPhone 17 Pro, for example, my iPhone recommended a charge limit of 85% because I spend most of my time at home and don't need the full 100% charge. You then just use the slider to set that limit. When you do this, optimized battery charging will be disabled. This is a feature that still allows your iPhone to charge to 100%, but does it in a way that's much better for long-term battery health. So if you're not gonna enable a charge limit, I would definitely recommend keeping optimized battery charging turned on. But if you can live with slightly less daily capacity, this is well worth considering. You'll get a little less battery each day, but an iPhone battery that lasts you a lot longer overall. Stop force closing your apps. If you're not sure what I mean by this, it's when you swipe up from the bottom of the home screen and hold for a second to bring up the app carousel. You can then swipe through all of your open apps, and if you swipe up on one of them, it fully closes that app. This is really designed for situations where an app is frozen or behaving in a way that it shouldn't, letting you force quit it when you need to. But what a lot of people do, though, is force quit every app as soon as they finish using it, or they force quit all of their apps at the end of each day. The reason that you should stop doing this is because it actually has the opposite effect of what most people think. It's common to assume that if an app is open, it's using data and draining your battery. But in reality, your iPhone is designed to manage open apps really efficiently. When you force quit an app, 
The next time that you open it, it has to launch fully, which uses more power than simply resuming an app that's sitting in the background. Apple has made this point many times over the years and has confirmed that the correct way to use your iPhone is to only force quit an app when you actually need to. Of course, it's your phone and you can use it however you like, but if you want the best advice on how to use your iPhone, force quitting all of your apps is definitely a habit worth breaking. If you ever watch videos like this and think there's no way I'm going to remember all of that, you should have a look at iPhone Essentials Plus. It's my training portal for the iPhone with more than 200 lessons all broken into clear modules so you can learn at your own pace. Every lesson includes a short video, a step-by-step -step guide with screenshots and a downloadable PDF so you can follow along in whatever way suits you. You can browse through the modules or just use the search tool to jump straight to what you need. There are no ads or sponsors and it's a single one-time purchase that includes all future updates. And if you've got a Mac, there's Mac Essentials Plus as well, which works in exactly the same way. You can buy each course on its own or bundle them together for the best value. If that sounds good, scan the QR code on screen or check the link in the description or the pinned comment. Stop logging your health symptoms in a note. Most people I speak to, if they log health symptoms on their iPhone, they do it using the Notes app. And I understand why. It's been the main way of doing this for years. The problem is that it isn't particularly secure and the information that you store there is no more useful than a basic word processing document. Once it's written down, you can't really do anything with it. There is a much better way to log health symptoms on your iPhone that's also more secure and it's built directly into the health app. Open the health app, then tap the magnifying glass in the bottom right corner. Scroll through the health categories and you'll see an option called symptoms. Tap into this, then scroll through the list to find the symptom that you want to add. They're ordered alphabetically, but if you've logged something recently, it will appear in a section at the top. Tap the symptom that you want, then press the plus button in the upper right corner. You can choose between not present and present, and if you choose present, you can then select whether it's mild, moderate, or severe. You can also add a start and end date and time at the bottom if that's relevant. Press the blue tick in the upper right corner, and your symptom is added. As I mentioned earlier, this is better from a security point of view but it's also way more useful. Instead of just writing things down in a note, you're now creating proper data. You can view this over time using the day, week, month, six month or year options at the top, which makes it much easier to spot patterns and get a clearer picture of what's going on with that symptom. Stop using the nine minute default snooze. If you've ever set an alarm on your iPhone, you'll know that when you hit the snooze button in the morning, it doesn't give you an extra minute, five minutes or 10 minutes it gives you nine minutes. Historically and scientifically, this has been seen as the ideal balance. It's not so short that you don't feel the benefit of snoozing and not so long that you can fully fall back asleep. Thanks to an update in iOS 26, you now have manual control over this. So if you prefer to keep things short and sweet with just a couple of minutes or live dangerously with a 15 minute snooze, you can do that. On either an existing alarm, or a new alarm in the clock app, look for the snooze duration option down at the bottom. It will always default to nine minutes, but if you use the scroll wheel just below, you can go all the way down to one minute and all the way up to 15 minutes. Just pick whatever works best for you. Stop having endless home screens with hundreds of apps. I get that this is a personal preference and some people can navigate 10 different home screens full of app icons and know exactly where everything is. I personally can't, and when I see people constantly scrolling through their home screens looking for a particular app, it makes me think most people can't do this either. There was a time not so long ago when this really was the only way to manage apps on your iPhone, but thanks to more recent updates, you don't need to do this anymore. The search on your iPhone is a much better way of getting to an app. What I'd recommend is using your home screen for the apps that you care about most, maybe a small collection of those apps, along with a couple of widgets. For everything else, you can either swipe across to the app library and search from there, or use the search button at the bottom of your home screen and simply type in the app name. If you don't want to do either of those, you can also use Siri. Just ask it to open any app on your iPhone and it will do it straight away. If you want a quick way to manage pages of apps that you no longer want on your home screen, rather than removing apps one by one, there is an easier option. Long press on the home screen to enter edit mode then tap the little dots just above the dock at the bottom of the screen. This shows all of your home screen pages and you can untick any pages that you no longer want to see. This doesn't delete any apps, it just hides those pages, making your iPhone much quicker 
and easier to navigate. Stop using full screen screenshots if you don't like them. One of the more controversial changes that Apple made in iOS 26 was the way that screenshots work. A lot of people, myself included, actually like it, but I completely understand why plenty of people don't. By default now, when you take a screenshot, instead of it appearing in the bottom left corner, you get a full screen preview. This gives you instant access to markup tools, sharing options, and if your iPhone supports it, Apple intelligence features at the bottom. I still see loads of people getting frustrated by this, often without realizing that you can turn it off. To do that, go into settings, choose general, then scroll down to screen capture. Tap into this and turn off full screen previews. Once you do that, any screenshots that you take will appear in the bottom left corner again, just like they did before this change was introduced. Stop sending entire messages when you don't need to. For a long time, if you received a message in the Messages app and you wanted to copy just part of it, maybe to paste into notes or forward to someone else, the only option was to long press on the message and copy the whole thing. You'd then have to manually delete the parts that you didn't want. In iOS 26, this has been fixed and it's something a lot of people still don't realize. So now when you long press on a message in the Messages app, you'll see a select option alongside copy. Tap select and you'll get the familiar text selection handles. From there, you can drag the start and end points to choose exactly the text that you want, then use the menu underneath to copy, translate, or share just that selected section. Stop allowing anyone to contact you. In most cases, when people are getting loads of spam calls or messages, they're coming from numbers that aren't saved in their contacts. Thankfully, your iPhone gives you a few tools to help you deal with this. So if you go into settings, scroll down and choose apps, then scroll down again and tap phone, you'll find a section called screen unknown callers. As of iOS 26, you've got a couple of options here. You can choose silence, which means calls from unsaved numbers will be silenced, sent to voicemail and still shown in your recents list. The caller won't reach you directly, they'll leave a voicemail instead and you can decide whether you want to call them back. There's an even better option added in iOS 26 called ask reason for calling. With this enabled, calls from unknown numbers are asked for more information by your iPhone before your phone rings. It usually appears on your screen a bit like a live voicemail, so you can quickly see who's trying to contact you and then decide whether to answer. I'd also recommend enabling the unknown callers toggle within call filtering. This moves missed calls and voicemails from unknown numbers into a dedicated unknown callers list in the phone app, making it much easier to separate unknown calls from calls that you actually recognize. If you then tap the back button in the top left, scroll up slightly and go into messages, you can do something very similar here too. Scroll down to unknown senders and enable screen unknown senders. When this is turned on, messages from unknown numbers are moved into an unknown senders list and you won't receive notifications for them. It does mean that if you're expecting a message from an unsaved number, you'll need to check manually, but it's really helpful if you get a lot of spam messages. You can also enable filter spam, which allows your iPhone to try to identify spam messages automatically and move them into a spam list. Of course, it's completely up to you. If you receive lots of legitimate calls from unknown numbers, you might not want to use these features. But for most people, they can make a massive difference when it comes to cutting down on junk calls and messages. Stop using the compact Safari tab if you don't like it. One of the bigger changes to Safari in iOS 26 was the introduction of the compact tab. That's the bar at the bottom of the screen that shows the address, gives you the back button and includes the ellipsis for things like sharing, bookmarks and other options. The idea is to give you more space for the actual web page itself and fewer buttons on screen. A lot of people aren't fans of this though, and you might not realize that you can turn it off. To do that, go into settings, scroll all the way down and choose apps. Then scroll down again and tap Safari. Scroll to the tab section and you'll see three options to choose from. Compact is the default and the one that we're talking about here, but you can also choose bottom. This gives you a tab bar that's about twice the height with more information visible at the bottom of the screen. Or you can choose top, where the larger tab bar is split between the top and bottom of the Safari page. Just pick whichever layout suits the way that you browse best. So those were 10 things I think every iPhone owner should stop doing in 2026. What about you? Were there any that you agreed with or disagreed with? Drop a comment and let me know.
And don't forget, if you want a free iPhone tip in your inbox every single day, you can sign up to The Daily Swipe using the QR code on screen or the link in the description. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.